Hi everyone, thanks so much for being here again. My name is Nikki and I'm a health equity education coach and I'm continuing a conversation about how we can use and practice decolonization practices in nursing. Today, what I'd like to talk to you about is addressing power imbalances. So to practice decolonization, we have to address power imbalances. So do you see power imbalances showing up in your organization? I know that I do. Nursing education in practice often reinforces power imbalances between healthcare providers and patients, particularly within marginalized communities. Decolonizing nursing involves recognizing and addressing these power imbalances and working towards more equitable and collaborative relationships with patients. Nurses must speak, and I love this, truth to power by addressing racism in their own systems and use their influence to advocate for transformative action-oriented processes. That can be looking at policies and initiatives in your organization. That can be assessing what you're doing on your units. That can be bringing the lens of health equity to errors that are happening in the hospital with patients and trying to determine if those errors are related to biases that we're seeing. Right. What I can tell you is that often when I worked as a bedside nurse and it's been many years since I did this, but that never leaves you. Right. It's like riding a bike. Um, I noticed that most patients, they took our word for it. They deferred to the treatment and to the practices that we were recommending and prescribing. Those that did not were considered non-compliant and non-adherent. They had more what we might be thinking of sort of deviant more behavior. I helped to co-author The Nurse's Role and Responsibility in Unveiling and Dismantling Racism in Nursing, a publication by the ANA. It's really a position statement to help us understand how racism shows up in nursing. And in it, we have several points that we make, and I wanna highlight just one of those points out of the several. And one of the points was that we recognize that words matter and inclusive language invites discussion. Language is dynamic and when used properly should consider social and situational context. Words such as refuse or non-compliant and non-adherent contribute to health disparities. Even language around AMA, leaving against medical advice, also contributes to that sense of the patient being wrong and labeling them, right? Even words such as vulnerable and marginalized, which are words that I often find myself using, can be used or should be used infrequently unless they are clearly defined. So what I wanna point out is that language really does matter and what matters really is the message that we're really internalizing and receiving. So what is the message behind these words? The message is, if you don't do it my way, don't bother getting any more help from me, that's the message, right? That's what we send to folks, whether it's verbally or non-verbally. And today this message still rings true but don't our patients have the right to inform us of how they heal and how they want to heal, how they want to be served? Don't they get a conscious choice in the treatment decisions we are helping them to make? How often have you overlooked what your patient was saying in favor of what you consider best practices because it was easier to do it your way, right? It happens, we fall into these traps. To correct power imbalances, we have to actively listen. We have to hear what our patients are telling us about their lived experiences. We may not be able to walk a mile in their shoes, but we can certainly take the time to listen. By doing so, we're using our voice, we are advocating, and we are ensuring that we are not sidelining their experiences. Thank you so much. If you have any comments or thoughts or even any questions about anything that I've shared, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Have a great day.